Hey, welcome. We're so excited to be here. I'm Nicola Spinoza. I'm with uh, Keller Williams Dallas Preston Road. I'm Jill Elliott. I'm with JP and Associates Realtors. I'm Andrea Trimble with JP and Associates Realtors. And Amanda Christensen with Evie Halliday. Awesome. So this is our first podcast together. So we're very excited. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. Let's do it. You know, when people hear real estate, what do you think they say? How's the market? That's yeah. the first thing they Definitely. say to you. Isn't anywhere, it? anywhere. Yeah. They see your name tag. Oh, so how's the market? Yeah. And, and you're like, well, wait, how much time do you have? <laughs> well, right. now you can spend that with us. <laughs> exactly. And that's perfect segue to our first uh, topic. We're going to talk about how much the market has shifted um, even in this last six months. Um, so what are you guys seeing right now? I've been seeing it shift for a while, but right now it's definitely moving more into an even market or maybe even a buyer's market. Um, I think for the homes that are just the perfect everything, updated, great neighborhood, great location, we're still seeing you know multiple offers and things like that. But I think for the majority of homes, it's really starting to level out, which is great because I've had a lot of buyers that have been wanting to find a home for a while and it was too competitive. So they kind of backed out and mm -hmm. now they're back in the market, which is really exciting. That's awesome. Now Especially is for homes over 500 because now we have 28% more inventory. Yeah. So there's more options, but sellers are having wrong expectations, I would say. And we're having to re-educate the sellers on pricing correctly. Well, and I also think that sometimes buyers say, oh, it's been on the market for two weeks. Let's <laughs> offer $50,000 low and see what happens. Yeah. And so we as agents, I think we have to come to that forefront and say, well, let's drop back and punt a little bit as to uh, Is the what house that really worth it? means. Yeah. yeah, if it's worth it, you can't go in 50 grand under. If it's worth it, that buyer's still going to be there even if it's two or three exactly. weeks in. So. Well, exactly. Well, I, I think, you know, as, as well with all trends, like the media and everything is always behind, right? So I'm very listing heavy. So I always see kind of, you know, things that go on and off market, you know, a couple years ago, we'd put signs out in the yard in certain areas and we could sell it within our own office. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, back in October, we started seeing things slow down tremendously where it was more than a weekend. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, okay, people, a lot of people that got into this industry got spoiled, right? Because they were mm -hmm. only in the market where it was selling in a weekend and like, oh, cool, anybody yeah. can do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. And now it's going to eliminate a lot of agents because it takes way more than just sticking it on the MLS to be able to sell it. And, and so um, a lot of the listing appointments that we're going on, we're having to set the seller's expectations because they're still coming off this high of, oh my gosh, you know, you can get top dollar multiple offers, things like that. And you're starting to see more and more 30, 45 days on market, um, which is still not a lot in, in the past from the past. But we're starting to see that a lot more, especially in areas that were ridiculous. I mean, I'm selling the same Frisco. house right now that's in Frisco and McKinney yeah. on the border. And we fought to get that house three years ago or two years ago. And now we have been on the market for about um, nine, 10 days, and we've gotten a lot of showings, but we're still not under contract. Is that your sister's house? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and is she calling you up as your sister going, um, you know, oh. there's a reason why they say to refer out family <laughs> <laughs> because you get those like, <laughs> oh no, oh no, I got, I got a good one on that. We um, built a house and my husband, um, I tell him he has a cushy job. So he would get up, wasn't far from our other house and he was there every day. The builder hated us because he was there every day at, you know, for about 30 minutes going, did you do this? You know, did you? And I'm like, hi, I'm his agent too. And I'm like, oh gosh, there's a reason. Maybe I should have called you. Oh, <laughs> you don't understand. Like I almost was going to pass this on to my agent, but you know, of course it's my sister. And so she's like, is it a bad indication that there was only three people that showed up this weekend? I'm like, oh my God. So but not necessarily. I just, no, no not, not at all. But she's too. freaking out. And so I keep telling her, I'm like, look, the fact that we this this weekend we got so many showings or whatever it just indicates and in her neighborhood i think is like 45 days average sure. so i'm like that's great that indicates we did a good job whatever but and a lot of them are still getting even if yeah. they're on the market for 30 45 days they're still getting asking price or really right. really close it's just taking mm -hmm. a lot longer because yes. you also have to remember that the market hasn't completely corrected itself and the only way for it to correct itself is for people to take losses right yeah. to keep going down because so many people in 350 and below were paying above asking and paying right. the difference with the appraisal so we spiked so much so those same mm -hmm. buyers you know they can't afford 350 375 so it you know in that market you're definitely seeing I mean we have a couple of listed right now that are under value quote unquote and they're still on the market mm -hmm. I thought it was crazy because Gracie Morrow actually sent me this this morning in 2017 1,105 homes sold 
in 2018, 972 homes sold. Yep. You know, I just like to look at stats and right. that in itself. Well, we are definitely up in listings, but not in, like you said, sales. Like the sales. So but it's going to turn it back around and that's what's going to happen. When people see that they don't necessarily have to pay 15, 20 grand over appraised value to right. get a house, these buyers are going to creep back out into the market and be excited to start looking again. So but I think it's a good thing. And it's great for see, buyers agents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but don't you see that um, more people, um, you know, the price point's getting a little higher for the average or, you know, and then what you get for that. So for example, what you could get two years ago for $400,000 in Frisco, looks a little bit different than what you get absolutely. today absolutely their expectations are different too when so people go in there and go where's my four hundred thousand dollar house you go it is right here you know and they're <laughs> well, like and what? i think i don't know if you guys have seen this but you know on listing appointments especially the last handful ones i've gone on to i've had to literally pick apart the comps to show them look look everything that's active right now and look how many price reductions. Mm -hmm. So no, mm -hmm. sir, we are not listing it at that price. And so that right now, and like I said, coming off that expectation where everyone's like, the market's hot, the market's hot. I'm like, okay, let's look at the actual data and see how long it's been on the market. I'm, I don't wanna do five listing reductions. You mm -hmm. know, we need to rise price aggressively since there's 10 other houses well, you know, the on the market. panel that you just did, what yeah. were they talking about? Like if, I know they gave a stat on if you, do price it right or even just below mm -hmm. fair market then it was like 40 percent. it was like a crazy number then if right. you overprice it and i don't, I don't remember three, the exact percentage but, but they were just basically saying more. that that you net more in the front yeah. because you create that momentum and i always tell exactly. them i'm like obviously our goal is to create a multiple offer situation so yes mr seller we might be doing it five ten thousand dollars below but by doing that we create so much traffic we sell it right away and we don't have to do those reductions because the, the stat is more than 30 days exactly because <laughs> yeah. they want it, that house and you know how it is with one buyer wants it you know all of a sudden it's like they telepathically tell each other mm -hmm. no one's interested until everyone's interested right. <laughs> that's how it feels anyway and i think um, a lot of times like like what i'm seeing with the older homes sellers are having to do you know paint jobs and do yeah. a little bit more remodel than because you know there's so many more new builds right and they're well, that's such a great point that. is that a lot of no, when you go north DFW, that that's what you're competing with. Mm -hmm. And the builders, I mean, I remember the a lot of the same builders, they weren't really wanting to work with agents, especially in that hot market. We have gotten more builder visits <laughs> with agent bonuses and things like that than ever, because now things have slowed down tremendously and they need the agent's help. You know, it's always convenient, right? They only value us when they really need us. <laughs> I know, I <laughs> Well, well they to, text and call a lot though, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> to add on to that subject, are you seeing that more buyers are wanting updated homes? I mm -hmm. feel like yeah, for a while for sure. they were like, oh, well, I'll, I'll take a fixer upper if I can get a good deal and I'll do the work themselves. But the market was so saturated and with contractors as well that people were having to pay more for the contractors to do the work or weren't getting good contractors. And now I'm finding with buyers, they'd rather have something that is updated my right. move in ready right you know sure. what's crazy is that i have more so obviously i specialize in short sales mm -hmm. and so my last four listings are new builds in the last three years and i'm doing a wow. short sale for wow and that's interesting. i think in the next year um based on what we're seeing especially here locally in dfw i think that's just going to be more and more because those people that were getting into the homes 100 percent loans they were getting the grants you know and a lot of times they weren't even putting much down or any interest and they were at their maximum because they were just desperate for home ownership they can't afford it now yeah and so. i think you know we were talking about this last week how they over um upgrade the home right. to things that don't actually give back value right Guilty. and they don't realize that well, yeah. I, well and, but i'll tell you you just closed on your house yeah so yeah i did and that was that was a new build but um something that i i did notice is a lot of the houses in that neighborhood let's not name it but um <laughs> you know that are trying to be sold that's what they fight because they didn't do them see i think there was a trend where because people they didn't, didn't do the upgrade exactly i was just about to say exactly that. i see that a lot and too. they didn't well now they want to sell it and they're like well wait a minute and then person goes down to the new build place you know the, the actual model home and they either have a spec that's close enough or they, they they're about to finish something or they just wait the nine months right. but that's kind of what i'm seeing of that kind of little backlash because back mm -hmm. there was a while nobody really did a lot of updates and i think that build. actually from what i've seen has has harmed people more than upgrade over upgrading has mm -hmm. because yeah. there's so much competition with new construction like you said right they'll just go to the model home and build a new one and get the upgrades that they want if there aren't mm -hmm. any in there 
in that type of neighborhood mm -hmm. or your older neighborhoods, you know, uh, Richardson, I always say Richardson's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's right there in the middle of, <laughs> of Dallas, anywhere. you know, yeah, it's, it's not up. going that way. Like Prosper's going that way, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's there. So, you know, you get what you get. Yeah. Um, and that's an interesting price point too mm -hmm. for people. Are you seeing, so Andrea mostly works the luxury market. Are you seeing the same thing uh, with 500 and up or whatever you consider luxury? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, not, like, I'm not, the short three, expert. not the 350 and below that we're talking about, but. <laughs> oh, definitely. I mean, we're just seeing things sit on the market more, you know, buyer's expectations are higher. Um, you know, it's, you know, a house that was built 10 years ago, they're having to do updates as far because the trends change so quickly and again there's so many new builds that you're competing against so for that price point you know buyers want it a certain way right but you know i was actually showing um a, about a year ago um some homes and the people they were like a, it, it was about a million and um they said what well, the first one was just gorgeous i mean every update you can imagine and they were like well it should be at this price point and i'm like oh you'd be surprised i told <laughs> you not the next one we because i'm like we're about to go there um and we went into the next one and while it was nicely done it really needed to be that freshened up kind of feel when you mm -hmm. walk into a house and they're like okay yeah no, i know what you're talking about about that well i think um, it's definitely but, certain areas right like you have but, west plano and you're not going to get the same type of updates, even if you are at 800,000 or whatever, if you go to Frisco or. Yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah location it's has different. a lot to do with it for sure. Right. But location is really what it's all about now, isn't it? Location, location. So a not so great house in a great location. Guess what you're doing? Paying for it. Absolutely. Love this conversation. Can't wait to talk about the design trends that we're all seeing. And uh, we'll see you in a second. All right.